Okay, folks. Can somebody just shut the door, please, to keep the heat in? We may have to open it if it gets too hot in here. It's not no, get nobody hot. got that. It's not going to get hot. All right. So let me guess what you are all here for. <laughs> you want to hear about the appointment of the second constable? <laughs> oh my. Okay. So. Um, everybody, did everybody sign in? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And there was a handout at the door about the public forum that the select board is going to hold next Monday night. That will be an opportunity for people to have a better opportunity to talk about their concerns or hopefully ideas. Um, so really tonight, this is all the statement that we have is what you see on this paper. And I understand, yeah, I'm going to read it aloud. But I understand that um, the space upstairs has been reserved for your use later this evening to talk about the issues. So let me just read this in case everybody didn't get a copy. This is dated today. There's a, a public forum regarding Number 10 Pond. Um, there's been a lot of recent discussion concerning Number 10 Pond. The Calais Select Board and other town officials appreciates the public's concerns and would like to facilitate a meaningful public dialogue. To that end, a public forum regarding Number 10 Pond will be held on July 31st, 7 p.m. at Callis Town Hall. The Select Board invites community members to attend this forum to participate in a constructive conversation. Given the complexities of this issue, the Select Board feels that it would be inappropriate to discuss it tonight. Select Board meeting at the Select Board meeting tonight as the agenda is already full and the regular business of the town needs to be attended to. We appreciate members of the public respecting the time limited, the limited time the Select Board has at its regularly scheduled meeting. In the interim, concerns regarding the public access to Number 10 Pond should be addressed to the Women's Relief Corps directly. So I will give it 10 minutes and a couple, give a couple of people an opportunity to speak briefly. Remember, there's a lot of people here. Do you want me to set a timer? Yeah, if you could set a timer, Sharon, that'd be great. All right, who would like to speak first? Oh, it's just um, public comment. It's just public comment. So, um, Cynthia? Okay. Um, just I've make sure you tell everybody your skin. Can My you name just? Cynthia Johnson. Thank you. And um, I've tried over and over again to reach Peg Bowen, who is the treasurer and seems to be um, the one sort of calling the shots with the Women's Relief Corps. Um, I was told by Peg that there are 30, when I ran into her um, at, at, the, at the Mirror Lake, and I said I had, uh, I was a guest of Robert Mitchell to park on his land. And um, because Tammy was giving me a lot of uh, harassment. So I, um, I saw her pulling out that same day. And um, I told her I had the right to go to uh, Rob Mitchell's land. And she said, get it in writing. So since then, I've been harassed many, many times. Many, many people have been harassed. I was harassed to the point of Tammy putting out her foot to trip me and down at the beach and um, and also saying uh, something, I think this is the direct quote, I'd like to grind your face into a rock. Then she said, no, I'd like to smash your face into the rock. This is after she put out her foot to trip me, I have witnesses. But what I really want to say is that um, you can't get through uh, to the only person I know Oh, there, there are three active members that I know. Kathy Silk, which is the president, mm -hmm. Peg Bowen, the treasurer, and Dorothy Naylor. I called, did call Dorothy Naylor. She returned my call, but she doesn't feel that she has to give me any information about number of members or anything. Peg herself that day, as I stopped her in the car, said 30 members. There are 30 members in the Women's Relief Corps, and she said 20 are active. So I don't know where they are. And so upstairs, if you don't have time now, I, I did put a mm -hmm. post on Front Porch Forum. Yeah, I saw your post. I have many, many questions, and we're going to add to those questions tonight if they want. If there's any more questions that people have, 
And um, I would say we're starting Friends of uh, Mirror Lake, you know, okay. that would be the name of, of at least the people. I have a million post-it notes from people on the beach who have been harassed or Okay, so I would suggest that if you feel threatened or if there's anything like that, you contact the Vermont State Police. And it, doesn't, it doesn't help. Unless she hits me, unless she physically does something to me, they're not going to do anything about it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay. <clears throat> we got how many minutes left, Sharon? Wait for it. Seven and four seconds. Okay, so another Millie? Yeah, I just I just wanted to say I remember when the camp was built up there. When that camp was built across from the, the beach. Mm -hmm. And I remember those people saying, I was a child, but saying, Don't worry. This will always be available to the public. It has been all these years and it will always be available. And I am just wondering if we're not, I don't think we're going to be able to deal with the Women's Relief Corps unless we can find more members um, um, at this point. But I'm, I'm just kind of wondering since it's been used for years and years and years. I learned to swim there. That was 67, 68 years ago when I learned to swim there. And, um, when you start taking things away from people that they've had, especially situations that are that bring pleasure and family outings, you're going to start having a lot more problems in the town than if it if it is open. And I am just wondering if maybe well maybe part of this group can do that, can look back at you know all the various deeds and so on. But what I am gathering is you think the beach is owned by the relief floor. We don't have conf we don't have the confirmation of that as yet and I'm not prepared to speak to that tonight. Yeah. Okay. That's that's all I I, just, I remember it well. The town, so. So. Is it is it owned by the town? Do we have confirmation that it is not owned by the town? We don't have confirmation. We don't have confirmation on ownership. On, any, on ownership as of yet. Okay. One way or another. Yeah. Okay. Who, um, Mike, Mark, no, Tom, I knew it was something, McCardle. Oh, McCardle, just a quick question. Is the road that goes around, um, is on Highway 63, today it was an uh, article in the paper, no, today, today? Um, that said that the road is privately owned. Can you explain what is that, the town highway, class four? The town has private? considered it a fourth class road and maintained and it. The town has considered it a fourth class road okay. and maintained it as such. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, Can you just state your name so everybody um, knows? Dorothy you? Singleton. I was reading somewhere that um, a select board can make a road or town. There's a process, there's a process for creation of a town road, and I forget what the right terminology is if it's Indem not indemnification. What's the correct Well, there, there are a number of processes available under statute, but at this point in time, the select board's vision is that it is a town road and has, has been a town road since its creation. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can I ask one quick question? If it is considered a fourth class town road, then there must be a certain amount of right of way. There is for the road where you know, I live over off the Duke of Brook Road. There's a 24-foot right of way okay. that leads to right. a 15-foot right of way. Okay. Then what is the problem here with these landowners? Um, I don't we're think we're not that there, There's a lot of legal nuance, and we don't have time, actually. I, either. I, I I'm sorry. Yeah, time constraint. But it, it, if okay. I may, Madam Chair, I, I think it would be really, you got all these people here tonight, which is fabulous, community members, if you all would take a little more time and spend less time with us. We're not going to be able to answer a lot of your questions tonight, but get together and kind of formulate ideas in terms of next step, what you'd like to see in the future, um, how you would approach um, going forward, and, and figure out a number of avenues so you don't you know, lock yourself into something that might dead end. Yeah. That's, that would be my strong suggestion. I mean, the, the, you know, we could use your help in coming up with suggestions, ideas, and being respectful, you know, not to have any, I don't know how many people go down there, but the Women's Relief Corps, um, periodically things are vandalized, and that's not okay. Whether you agree with what is going on or you don't, vandalism is not something that is acceptable. 
So I'll just put that out there because they had an incident recently where that happened, and that's not acceptable in any case. So let's work towards an amicable, respectful, thoughtful solution to what appears to be a townwide problem. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Andy Wallen. My curiosity is about the situation of the Veterans Memorial. Yep. There's my um, understanding that there, if it's there, there has to be a right of way to it. It's like a landmark. Well, I'm just yeah, that's, really that's, curious what the steps are. And yeah. For the next meeting, not today. Well, you know, this is a huge issue. It encompasses more yeah. things than, than the swimming access, and it encompasses the Veterans Monument. So it's, it's really a pretty big, complex, entwined issue. So it's not a, there's not a simple answer, not a simple solution. So we would really appreciate your help. And it's amazing that so many people have turned out. So that's a good sign. So I suggest. Millie, can you let Millie, somebody else has their hand 90 up? 90 seconds, Madam Chair. 90 seconds left. I think it is pretty simple, actually. But I'd like to frame this historically. If you go back you, to the 1946 you, wait a minute, could you just New stay Yorker here? magazine. Could you please you stay here? Wait a minute. Could oh, you please? Could you please your back? OK, thank you. If you go back to the 1946 New Yorker, you will see that Mary McCarthy, who spent a better part of that summer here, wrote a short story based around the swimming access at Number 10 Pond and the attempt at infringing the public's right to access back in 1946. Now, if the, the breadth of this meeting, the size of this meeting you're speaking of indicates that much public interest, I think that the, that the town should hire a lawyer to act for the public interest and not for the private interest of California dreaming women who come here to privatize public property in North Calais and other hyper gentrification measures. The public needs to have a right to what should be and has for a long time been public access issues. And you did, somebody has mentioned apparently the monument to the Civil War dead at, at Monument Hall, which has been privatized. So I think there has to be a rollback. And if it's not done intelligently, I will support rolling back the historical s centers in this count in this where, where that are protected, Th that kind of, I mean, I, I've always supported that. But if, if the right for kids to swim in an obvious public place is taken away and people can't honor their war dead and stuff like that, something has to change in a big way. Upstairs, all, all of us go upstairs and start planning how we're going to deal with this. And Denise is the outside staircase. Yeah, I, I am hearing that Denise is saying that it would be very helpful to the select board for us to do some talking and planning. And I think that's just what we should do. There are a lot of people here. Let's do it. Wait a minute. Um, just a minute, Rob. I, I'd just like to say a few short things about um, the stewardship of public assets to the town that are controlled by private boards. There's a lot of them in this town and it's kind of a trend where there's disagreement on how these individual boards are doing it, I guess is a fair way to put it. And there needs to be some way to conjoin them in a, in a good way where everyone's public good is in mind and it's it's easy to uh, be on the outside of one of these boards and see how it looks but there's no laws there's no rules and regulations for them like the select board is bound to there's you know no cookie cutter way to do it so the best way to help is to support and to become involved so 
that, I guess that's all I gotta say. Okay, thanks, Rob. Thank you. All right, thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ed Walbert. And isn't there a law in Vermont that if you utilize a piece of land for 15 years and nobody takes it away from you, you can claim it? Doesn't that you have to go to court? You have to go to court. You have to go to court and assert your right, and a judge would have to adjudicate okay. Okay. and grant that, that those rights. There is a law around public for recreation. That sounds like a great place to start. Can I just right say there. before everybody leaves that no. before goes upstairs? I framed a lot of questions on front porch forum that came out today. So we're going to look for if there's any more questions yeah. beyond that. But we want answers to those questions. Okay. So I, if, you, if you have to go, I put them on the front yeah. porch floor. <laughs> so. Are we ready to move on to the next uh, agenda items? <laughs> okay. Back on track here. So you guys all know that. <laughs> So I did this one on, on the beach said like I'm announcing Friends of Mirror Lake because I swim daily there and I've been going there for 20 years. So I sort of have my finger on the pulse of what's going on and I've been hearing stories for years. And I never get an answer from, the, from what might be the active and only active members about anything, like Peg Bowen is the treasurer, Kathy Silk is the president, and Dorothy Naylor is the secretary. All the other uh, Relief Corps members that are once Relief Corps members, they still pay their dues, but I don't think they're going to meetings. Um, and it's very hard. I've been calling Peg Bowen for a week, and she never returns my phone call. So she is the one that I always hear the name of, Peg Bowen, Peg Bowen, Peg Bowen. Okay, so I was tired of being run off the beach by Tammy Lino, and, and she's, she's, she's really getting out of control. And I, I did post... Uh, something well yesterday but it ended up being on the forum today and, it, and, and, and I would just like to begin by the, the questions that I think should be framed beyond private property because um, everything's about private property right now and, and that it legitimizes kicking everybody out it is the Women's Relief Corps private property um, and the shore, the water is is public to everyone in Vermont if you can get on the lake. So there's the boat launch, which will be public, but you have to be a fisherman or have a boat. I don't even know if kayaks would be allowed. If, if, if are they? But um, the fishing fisherman's license is what supports that launch. That launch area, I understand, was given to, to the public for um, that use by the, public, uh, by the Women's Relief Corps. That's my understanding. Then there's an interior part of the, um, the memorial area that in the 1930s was given as a raffle, believe it or not, to encourage people to um, come. Swim and have a little camp there, camp there. I was told that by one of the, one of the few people that own one of those, pro, those properties. He, doesn't ha, he hasn't developed it. He's given me the right to park on it. Um, but he said they've had that in their family all these years. There's another um, family that uh, has a, another little cottage that's made there. And um, they're very upset about some property issues there or their access to the beach. Um, then, the, uh, then there's the cottage that is Tammy Lino's. 
Tammy has decided that this is private property, even though she, her real right is the right of the water pipes to go to her cottage. So she has no rights either. And recently, she was, um, she got permission, she says, from Peg Bowen, and, and a week ago Saturday, she posted signs saying, beach closed private party, both in the Boulder parking lot now and on the beach. And she also blocked it with the canoe and anyways, and, and she's targeting me because I have permission to go through the right of way which has been used for decades, many, many decades, um, by the people who own property. Um, so she's served me with no trespassing for using this right of way, which I have permission to do, and said her land is on that, which it may be. But anyways, I said, where is the right of way? She said, through the pine tree. I said, well, OK, let's cut down the pine tree if we have to. So not that I would want to, but there, she's not giving me any real answers. And she's being very rude. So um, I got sick of the runaround. You know, I know the town is really, really trying to understand all the legalities. I've talked to the road commissioner. I came to the conclusion, after all the different people I've spoken to and my experiences on the beach, is let's frame this a different way. Because it's not all about private property. What it is is about the intention in the deed, which I actually have here, um, of this hall in the first place, which was really, um, it, it was dedicated to Stowe Post 29 and eventually became Memorial Hall. And the Stowe family um, in this town lost three sons to the Civil War. One of them, William Stowe, left, I've heard different accounts, 70 to 100 letters <coughs> that, um, that are very interesting. And there's a three volume book on that with a chronology of the Civil War and William Stowe's um, letters. And the cemetery is on my road, Jack Hill. So I've gone to the cemetery, and what struck me, and I think why the Stowe post was sort of the original Memorial Hall, is that that family lost their three sons. But when you go to the graveyard, there are four little tiny unmarked graves. So they must have been, I'm guessing, were children that died at birth, before birth. Then there was a two-month-old boy, son, who um, died. Then there were the three brothers who fought in the, uh, uh, the war. One died at 17, another I don't remember, and the other one was William Stowe, 24. I, and then there were two other graves that had no dates on them, but they were regular graves. And then there were another two of the, uh, the husband and wife, and um, Emily and <coughs> Al Al Alonzo. I think his name is. So anyways, there's a history around this. So, and a lot of men died in that war um, dur during the Civil War, and other wars, Vietnam especially too. But that was a real hardship for this town. And if you read the history, it was, it was really something, and really sad. And so um, I just want to read these questions, because I think it will help us frame something beyond private property. And I really do urge everybody to read my post that was in tonight's Front Porch Forum. If there anyone isn't, we can figure out a way to get it to you on the forum. But I, 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 it's more than about private property. So I wish, um, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't mind if that were read, but I, I didn't, my printer wasn't working. So I couldn't um, bring it with me to read. So it has a little bit about the hall and stuff. So these are my questions that I frame. So what is the Women's Relief Corps mission? How many members are in the local Women's Relief Corps? How many members are active, actively coming to meetings? How many voted to close down public swimming? Is, there an organiza is this an organization of three, 30 or three? Because Peg Bowen told me 30 members, I only know of three that, that could be contacted. But Peg does not return my calls. How did Memorial Hall become so decrepit? 
And I have the report here that was written by Peg Bowen in 2014, where she hired an engineering company, DeWolf, and wrote up a report about what's going on with Memorial Hall and why really it's been condemned for public functions. You know, the fire crows weren't up, but what, this, what really upset me was that, and, and I, I could read that, or you guys can look at it, but what really upset me was I realized, and it's always to protect the hall, it's always protect the private property, which is her role, which is the women's relief role, to, to, to you know, protect the physical structure along with have honorary um, ceremonies, charitable ceremonies, you know, public ceremonies, so, um, and events. And uh, uh, anyways, I'll keep reading. So, um, so why were the windows sealed, creating rot underneath the lower floor? I guess that's what really worried me, that um, who was responsible for that? I mean, who doesn't know in a wet place, if you seal it all up, it's, it's, it rots. So at this point, to fix that rotting um, and, and, and the whole structure of that hall, you would have to lift it up. And if you lift it up, there's, there's not a full basement underneath all of it. It's just a partial basement. So the really scary part, or the really difficult part, would be lifting it up and dealing with it from underneath that crawl space. So maybe it means, I'm speculating, that you have to lift it up even higher so that men can work under it, because there isn't a full basement. So, um, so... Can, can, can I just... Can I just... Can, can, we, can I just finish my questions, then let's just open it all up. Uh, just get through them. Well, I think it's important that people yeah. think about that. If you're impatient, I'm sorry. But I, I've spent a there lot of time. issues. I've spent, these are the issues to frame. These are, you know, I've spent a lot of time on this. This isn't the first day I've been doing this. I've been working on this a long time. So I'd like to at least finish the questions. And I won't elaborate then. Is the hall for sale? Who would be eligible to buy the hall? Charitable nonprofits, armed forces, any wealthy buyer? Is the town of Calais considering any possibilities? Eminent domain? Should our community make an effort to raise funds to, re to save the hall? Will the memorial itself stay here? Why is the site itself bereft of cultivated beauty, like flowers? Is the town maintained Class 4 Gar Road, the property of the Women's Relief Corps or the town of Callis? Private property, private property, private meetings, <clears throat> private minutes, private parties, private swimming, private, private everything. Is this attitude aligned with the original intention of the deed? And I brought the deeds with me. Um, and then there's just a couple more questions. Where are the checks and balances? And why is an organization who no longer holds ceremonies to honor the veterans or other charitable events and wants to close down all public swimming access on the beach, not paying taxes. So I'll just end with, I have the report that Peg Rowan wrote, if anyone wants to look at it, of all the problems with that building, they're real, and how did it get like that? Um, and if, if Peg Bowen's the only one I ever hear, hear about, then, you know, I, I, I think Peg Bowen is the one to ask, but I don't see that she answers any calls. Downstairs. Oh, Maybe you want to talk up here? <coughs> Downstairs, there were two people sitting, I saw them there, who have been members of this relief floor. Uh, the parents have been members. Um, I know some, some other people who've been members. Maybe not active members, but members. And I've, you know, I've been in, around this town for seven, over 70 years, and I remember a lot of what went on, and I know I can find some of those people. Uh, Annie Christopher is a member. Are you a member? Yes, you're a member. Thank you. I'm an unpaid member. I haven't paid dues since 1990. 
And so I think that it's very real to think that we can find those people. But I also heard very clearly downstairs in the select board meeting that it hasn't been determined who owns that property. And it has been determined that the road is a public class four road, it belongs to the town. If it belongs to the town and there's a right of way of 25 feet, what is the problem? I don't know. There is no problem. No, there's no problem. So that we heard. What do we want to do as a group? How do, how do we want to form and put the pressure on? I'm willing to find members. I'm willing to do that. I see this as kind of two, two separate issues. So I feel like there's the public swimming access mm -hmm. at the beach, and then there's the whole issue of the property. And to me, like, I personally, I mean, I would love to see Memorial Hall and use again and weddings and functions and more of a community resource, but I am more interested in my kids swimming at that beach every day. I think we do that. So that's where, like, right. my, not saying that not both don't need to be addressed, but I feel like, I just want to say, I feel like the town isn't dealing with it because I, I do feel like, especially seeing the number here, that their lawyers are probably trying to figure out what's going on. Yes. Right? And I feel like yeah, they are. if it is a public road, can you tell us your name? Oh, Lisa McCarthy. I'm sorry. So I don't think it's a public road that might make that a non-issue, although the parking will still be an issue now. But I also know that there's legal precedent in the state of Vermont. It's not law, but legal yeah. precedent around public easements to get to recreational water sources. Yeah. So if it went to court, like if the Virgin West were you know, to hire a lawyer and bring it to court, I'm pretty sure we could get a public easement. I don't think they have a lawyer. Oh, okay. Maybe not. I heard from a person up the road who said that they were being advised not to get involved at this point, but it sounds like with all of the, by the town lawyer, but by all of the um, comment and upset around it, I think that maybe they were thinking that. Mm -hmm. And Who's are they looking for the, the, the mm -hmm. uh, select board? Are you seeing there? Oh, select board? Yeah. I'm, and, yeah. And, um, and, and when you were saying downstairs, I thought, which kind of goes along with what you just said about um, what if we did take it, you know, if we all somehow chipped in and took it to court. Well, that's what I was going to talk about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just want to make a comment. I've been researching this a little bit. And I'm just, I, just, I wrote my thoughts down so I can get it clear. I mean, first, according to Vermont law, a private landowner cannot, you cannot sue someone for recreation purposes. So that's the same thing as herself. She's out for lunch. I mean, because, you know, you can mountain bike, you can run, you can ski in Vermont, you can swim, you can't get sued. So that's just ridiculous. Um, if a community, um, if the community uses an access for water, for swimming, or for some other use for a substantial number of years, the community has a right to use this. This has been proven in Superior Court. It was Drake versus Moonfane in 1979. Yes. Um, the court concluded that the public is entitled to continue to use this. Um, to me, this is cut and dry. It's just, all we gotta do is get a lawyer. I mean, it's already from 18, 1888. All we need is one lawyer, take it to court and be done with this. Leave everything as it is. Don't turn it into like Curtis Pond with the damn barrel of trash that gets trash. Mm -hmm. Don't do all these, and just leave it the way it is. Yeah. It's, it's being investigated. It's being investigated. It's not, to me, it's just cut and dry, just why? Sometimes it isn't because it, it, was, it was a little bit different. It's a little different than this this situation. But I did um, I did send out that I, I I had heard about that and I got an email about that. So I sent that out to some people and it and they're you know like Stephanie Kaplan is one. So she's looking into that. Yes, I mean the original deed of the land. It says it right here in 1885. William Chase deeded the land for public use. Mm -hmm. I mean it's right there. I mean, so that land was deeded for public use. It also specifically, let me get the, you know, I should pass the deeds. I think that they, I think the Women's Relief Corps, being led by certain people, have decided that it's... And you can't, because the original deed says it was... I know, but they decided to privatize it, and that was not, I mean, I grew up in this town. We always could go there and go swimming. We could always welcome there. And... Then the new 
people sort of took over, but the old guard was very clear about what, what that whole property was about. Yeah. But again, if I'm the president of the Women of the League Corps, because we're just a chapter, you're just a tiny chapter in this larger organization. Yeah. So, so I have to chime in on that. I uh, went on to the, their website and I got the email address of the president and I sent her the copy of the, this last article. It's a cute she needs to be concerned about this and she needs to be aware of what's going on in, within her organization and Can you the people clarify, representing her. Can you clarify who you're talking about? Sorry. I don't you know, mm -hmm. think we're calling her. This is the president of the Women's Relief Corps. Of the large. The <laughs> national. 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 Mm -hmm. right. yeah. It's way out west somewhere. Um, I haven't received an answer yet, but I think we should just all go online and start. What's their web uh, address? I can Google what it is. Google it. Google it. It's there. The National. The National Women. If you go to their website, there's information about becoming a member. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to their website, there's information about becoming a member. And what it says is that any woman over the age of 13 of good moral character <laughs> who is very patriotic <laughs> is able to join. And that, and what it says is that you apply to be a member to the national board. They approve or don't approve your membership, and then they assign you to your local chapter. And so there's a $15 per year fee, membership fee, and then there's an additional $15 application fee. So. One thought I had was, what if a whole bunch of us would pony up the 30 bucks and become members, wouldn't that then automatically get us invited to their next meeting? No, um, there are a lot of people try that weird deal, and it kind of got by the locals. Yeah. What they do in the local, let me tell you what goes on now. I remember probably 40 years ago when it all changed. They, the new guard started coming in and they would get together and have these meetings and decide that person wasn't worthy or this one and they didn't want them for one reason or another. They became very selective of who they let in and, and I think it's still probably going on. I know it is because I remember probably eight years ago, uh, Priscilla, Priscilla Batman was a good friend of mine and she was uh, part of the Relief Corps. And Annie and Annie Christopher and I talked about joining, and um, Priscilla got involved in the whole process. And I don't think either one of us ever got in. I don't. I don't. I know I didn't go the full route because I knew I wasn't going to get in. They don't like me and, and because I talked to them. Do they have bylaws in the area? They, yeah. Um, Register with the Secretary of State. Okay, say, say your name. People don't know the, to me, recent history. I came here in 1971, and I left in 87. It's a terrible Washington brown area. Came back in 2006. Anyway, all through the 70s, and I think well into the 80s, that fishing, the, or the, the access there up the road by that fairly large camp, takes water out of the pond. Anyway, that was that was used by everyone, no questions asked. But also there was a beach facing the Memorial Hall on the left mm -hmm. that was used by a whole lot of people, including myself. And people would go out on the point and swim from there. So and that was all unchallenged. What I think has happened <coughs> is that people with private property interest immediately at the pond's side and further back in the woods where there were microscopic lots and I remember the one tenth of an acre. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was talking about. Those are yeah. land landowners that we have to yeah. Yeah. Um, that they used the, the association, the Memorial Association, Women's Corps, whatever it is, Grand Army of the Republic, I thought it was. They 
use that as an instrument to assert their, no, extend in an aggressive way their private property rights and excluded people from using the beach by the Memorial Hall and then later excluded the public from even visiting the war memorial there. So, it, I mean, it was crazy and people shouldn't have allowed it, but it was allowed. They got away with it for quite a while. What was the Look, I'm talking about the 70s into the mid 80s. Oh, thank you. I know about it. That's, that's all very interesting, but more recently, Peg and, and her family purchased a lot of property around there, and I think on behalf of or for their own purposes. There was a proposal not that long ago to build a parking lot yeah. on the property. They ran into stormwater issues, other permitting problems, and then, uh, but they were they were holding regular events, um, weekly weddings all summer long. Um, the reason why I asked about the charter and bylaws when we register with the Secretary of State is that's generating income and they have to report that. They have to, um, there's this money being brought in, so if there's work and maintenance that needs to be done on the property, it's probably spelled out in the charter. How many, how many are voting members in the local charter? I'm sure it's, it's identified. I think to be that nonprofit, you have to file your bylaws and identify who your officers are. Peg is apparently the secretary, there's a chair, so there's a whole hierarchy that's established and then reported. Um, so there, there were funds being brought in, and I think there was a concerted effort from, from outside looking in that um, there was a fair amount of money being made, and then buying up these little postage stamp lots was more about parking for that, as I recall. Uh, Eddie, is that all? Correct me if I'm wrong, there's no place there. So, so that there's something something amiss going on there, but it seemed like it was all about that until the day came when that fire truck. Um, somebody said that this was a dangerous place to be. I don't even know if there's a, there's another means of egress on the second floor. It's certainly not accessible yeah, under the ADA. Yeah. They're so probably not accessible under the ADA. So you know, there's a lot of federal, state law and regulation. I'm sure that come into play here. So I think the question is. Um, for public, again, getting back to that, if you, the historical information is really interesting, but what is the real um, impact? Why are people here? And that is lost the right to use that. And the like, other thing that I just wanted to say something really so, quickly. How do you get around that with unwilling people? Well, I think you know, in order to get around and, and get inside the organization with unwilling people, potentially an unwilling select board, because this is difficult. It's costly. Hiring an attorney is very expensive. Challenging a long-standing organization that may be also unwilling, and particularly if it's out of state, that's very interesting. Um, they may not want to be involved in that either. And something like that may have a lot of legal protection, even against eminent domain. You may not be able to acquire um, those type of prescriptive rights on, on that kind of entity. You probably can as a private individual, but I question whether you can against uh, that sort of organization. Because if it's public through their bylaws, then public has had access. If they choose to take that away, they may have some protection. Those are legal questions that are cost you a lot of money to find out. If I say no, we're out of that door. We're out of that door. They're what is illegally registered. Can we hear from this gentleman over here, please? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. yes. I've raised my hand three times. Uh, yes. I just want to say I'm Richard Morrell. Um, we're kind of new to this area, but I learned how to swim there. <laughs> and my uncle owned a house on the other end of the boat access, and we grew up there every summer. And I find this kind of disturbing that somebody single-handedly or a group, a small group of people close it off to everybody. Um, to make things a lot easier, if people haven't seen this yet, just go online type in the Vermont water rights. Yeah. UVM did a great um, article and it explains everything that everybody's talking about right now in terms of what's legal, who can go there, and, and what, their, what the rights are, the property rights, um, just so people know the easement of, of any property on that lake is defined by the low water mark. And anything that's underwater is available to us. 
Obviously, if we can't get to that, there's a problem. Now, it's a couple people mentioned, um, you know, fishermen and people that are on boats. Well, I've known as a fisherman my whole life that I can walk down the river anywhere. I can walk down a river into a lake and walk all over the place. Yeah. And, but aside from that, the people that lived next to my uncle and in the surrounding area, they never had a problem with people using that beach. They said, yeah. if you need to go to Nelson Pond, you can go across my property. You know, that's, that's the way that it was. And uh, <coughs> I, I just think that it's disturbing, again, that everybody's <coughs> having to have meetings to talk about something like this. And... I should have had the woman who owns that property now come to this meeting, but um, which, which property are you talking about? It's on the other end of the lake. So if you're at the loading or the, I keep saying loading dock. Colleen Hewitt, boat launch. Boat launch. They own the property on the direct Bottoms. other. Yes. Bottoms and Mary. Backlands. These guys own the property too. Which, which, do you know which house it is? Well, it's, I can't remember the name of the road, but there are three houses on that little driveway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And my uncle owned the house at the very end of that driveway. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I think that, again, I think it would help if people just checked out the, the water rights because they talk about all of that stuff. And if the building's an old building, a historical building, there are grants that would take care of whatever is wrong with that building. But that's they, beside the point. But, but they've also... It's not, it's not, it's not, I just have to say, uh, I mean, and I'm not trying to take over, it's just I've been studying this a lot and talking to people and finding out things. And the, 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 you cannot talk about one without the other because the hall owns the, you know, basically the, the, the shoreline. And they don't own the water, the low water. It's, it, I don't know if it's the low or the high water. I always thought it was the high water mark. That we could get into the boat launch and walk along. No, no. But, but it's the low yeah. water, water mark, I believe. Yeah, because the water level changes throughout but the But see, year. that's that's not it. It's like, I mean, I'll get a raft and I'll just go in at the boat launch if yeah. I have to. But the problem is, it's a sweet beach for kids. I took my daughter there. Everybody has a story about Memorial Hall or that or a beach. There used to be those beaches around the Memorial Hall, which were easy to access. And, um, my understanding is, under Peg Bowen's leadership, she put the rocks in so it's difficult. There's no beaches in the front of the hall or on the side of the hall. And so we've all been funneled, and then we had a big escapade last year with, with someone we needed to get rid of. It was one person, yeah. but it, it, it took us all summer to get rid of them. And, um, and then, uh, so that gave the place a bad reputation, but it was one person. And, and right now I'm seeing one person policing the beach. Now, um, the, I, I can't even say the Women's Relief Corps, because I, you know, the only one I absolutely know for sure once this beach shut down is Peg Bowen. And she has the rocks right there poised to do it, maybe this week. But um, what I'm asking and why I have these questions framed like this is that I want to shine a light on who is the Women's Relief Corps, how many voted to do this, and um, that's what I mean, that's for the starting place because if it's all private and Women's Relief Corps and Women's Relief Corps and everything's private, then I mean, you don't get any more than private property. You don't get past private property. This is, this is shining a light on um, what's going on within the Women's Relief Corps. And my understanding is that, and I've spoken, I have spoken to other Women's Relief Corps members. One of them's, well, I, I know, and I called her. She can't even get the minutes to April's uh, meeting. And she's a member, but you know. Well, that's, that stuff should be divulged if it's in a group. That's what I'm saying. That's why if somebody I'm thinks that I'm just like complicating it, it's not because I'm complicated. Because I'm saying, why? What's? What, who is the Women's Relief Corps? How many people are, you know, active? How many voted to do this? I want to know how many people voted. Just, just that one question. Tell me. I, 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 no, I mean, Dorothy Singleton's here, yeah. and she, you know, she's a member. Let's hear what, actually, let's hear what Don Yeah, Don 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 talk, talk to us. Oh, I, was, I stopped going when they told us to take people off the beach. 
I updated the memorial stone. I spearheaded the effort, you know, the new part from World War II on. And then someone's name was left off, and so I made a little another stone next to that. I said, I'm done with this thing. It's nothing about the mission that the Relief Corps is supposed to be doing. Supporting veterans, giving relief to people in need. It was never about that. It was always about the fall. So I got disgusted and I stopped going. When, when did when you join? When was that meeting that brought this issue of closing the school access? That, they, she just, Peggy just said, kick people off the land, this is my property. And I see people swimming there and I think, I'm a member of this organization. You can swim here. Oh. <laughs> 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 1990. What? 1990. Wow, okay. She's been at it for a long time. Well, that's, that's 40 years. And no one has swum on the beach. beach. The beach yeah. was a better beach. To the hall. Yeah. 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 It's the same oh, thing. Right. But I heard, what I heard the town say is they're not entirely sure that it is their property. The beach area. That's what I just heard. If it's a public road, Point about Wait, the road, the center of the road. Yeah, but if there are boulders about to go in, we need to get it stopped. We That's right. The boulders are for the boulders are for the boulders are for the boulders. Mary, what it? Do you mind if I bring this over? Or do, would you rather not? Okay. Um. What? Behind the cottage. So. Yeah, yeah. Cottage, but Mary was going to say about, something. Right. What about this idea? As a group, we say to the town, you have an organization here that's asserting authority that it doubtfully has. It doesn't have it doesn't have funds to maintain. They can't even have their own meeting place anymore because it's rotten and poor. And it's a fire hazard. So yeah. if we accept those things as being true, I think it probably does a lot. It is true. So what it's it's impotent in terms of following its proper, you know, stated purposes. So why not seize the property through the public domain for the public? The town the town isn't willing to do that at this point, you know. Well, but Mary, should Mary, Mary should speak. Mary should speak because you know I think she should speak. <laughs> well, I just um, so I'm Mary Jacobson and I live on the far side of the lake. And I like you guys absolutely love Number Ten Pond. And um, you know what we really love about it so much is how incredibly clean it is. It's an incredible body of water. Um, and I would say to everybody moving forward, in whatever fashion, um, whatever shape things are going to take to hold on to a swimming area, there have been things happening over a number of years that have been harming the pond. Um, the usage has increased exponentially. It's not just limited to the beach. It, people are going all the way around. But, um, I mean, I can just, can't tell you the amount of garbage is, uh, you know, feminine products, is used prophylactics, it is McDonald's trash. I pick this stuff up all the time. It's used disposable diapers. It's every day. I walk or run the JR Road almost every day of the year. I live there year-round. I'm not living there just in the summer. It's my backyard. It's where everybody swims. But it smells. Um, I think even the nicest I know <laughs> probably have children or adults in their family who are going to the bathroom there. And they're not using the porta potty. Because it also is disgusting and gets flipped over all the time. So I just I'm trying to say, like, if you love the lake and you're gonna try to move forward with something, you have to put that component in. How is it gonna be yeah. managed? Right now, all of that property's not really managed, which is part of the problem that whether the women's relief corps wants to or not. There's no management, and we don't have a police force or anything around locally. So I'm on the Curtis Ponds Committee, so it's a volunteer committee.
Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we had to do that a couple times, but I feel like overall, with pretty minimal effort, it's been pretty effective. Um, cool. Perks you. Number 10 is a little different. So I don't know, but I feel like that could be worked with somehow. I feel like there's enough people who are just saying to like keep it on the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, I think. It's not just local people who are coming, it's people who are from and far away. We have to do kind of conservation of the shore. Same book. It 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 it, it's, it probably right around after wh where you're reading. It it talks about all the functions that used to be there. You right. know, not just weddings, but you know. And I, I remember. Yeah. Plenty of family weddings. All of our family reunions have been held here. I mean, yeah. 
Well, my yeah, aunt and uncle was my they were married there. there. <laughs> but, but, but one thing that you can leave out is the last part, whereas as far as can be discovered, Memorial Hall is the last GAR Hall in existence in America, except for one other located in Washington, and that in itself makes it a really special place. Right, but it may make it difficult for the national organization to know how to handle a situation like this. But it might not be difficult to get it on the national register. Historic building. Oh, it is. It's, it absolutely is. It's on a historic. It's a. It's a very rare historic site, especially if it doesn't have taxes, pay taxes. So it's already on the. Historic oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I we I know somebody um, who actually called. This is a couple years ago because we've been kind of thinking about this. We saw the writing on the wall a long time ago, so um, he called, and as soon as he mentioned anything about maybe this is you know being mishandled, they didn't want to hear it. So, you know, I, 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 you know, yes, it'd be good to be in touch with the, with the na at the national level, mm -hmm. but, you know, I, I am shining a light on the local level. I mean, I just want to know, who are they? And, and, and because they but don't, maybe through they the probably national level, you can find out who they are. Yeah, but if you look, it's pretty clear that that website is not the it's basically. It is very clear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't. Like they might like sell it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything to them as a national organization because as a national organization, they don't really do anything. And they're not maintaining it either. No, yeah. Did, did, does the and women's six relief corps have to answer to them? Did, I mean, does this local yeah. women's relief corps have to answer to the national level? Well, at some level, sure. But 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 but, but there's no back and forth. So I think if you they contact them, they would be very happy. discussed at length is this issue of, uh, we'll name it, Tammy Reno, harassing and yeah. threatening violence towards memory, the members of our community. And I just want to say that, that that, to me, beyond all this other stuff, is something that needs to be addressed. And I think that anybody who experiences that, especially given that we were told at the select board meeting that according to the select board, that is a public right of way, the road anyway, mm -hmm. a class four road. They've been maintaining it as a class four road for years. And I think that any, you know, inappropriate behavior garnered towards community members by her or others should be instantly reported to the select board and the town constable and that they, and the state police, police have needed, and that the town has a duty to respond to that. I've already but done it. Sure well, I know, I know. But, 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 but the more calls to the state police, the, call the state I'm police at Middlesex. Anybody it happens Reported. to. Reported. Just reported. This is yeah. regarding it. I went online today, indictment in Vermont. How to get an indictment. You can, you can download a form, a legal document, Who's threatening you with harm? And you can go to court and have it acted upon. I think a lot of it has just gone unreported. And 
I had serious, a serious issue with her. I mean, I had, no, I mean, it was guilty. Let me actually pull it on the side because a friend of mine was at the beach when that happened to you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it should be. Take the phone number of the state police with you when you go to the beach and tell people, here's, I mean, I take my post it notes. So. Take your indictment to court, then the police will act. They're not going to just act. It takes a physical act, but that's what I was told by the well, officer. Well, when she tells me she was never afraid that she had a revolver under her Who said that? They told me that. Because I didn't have to stay for a while. All right, can we come to that disclosure? I went out on this point when she came. She said, I have a revolver. Oh, wow. Yes. 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 Normally it's 25 feet from the center of the road for a regular road. It's less so for a class four road. It's 16 feet. 16. But there may be also because of the border. 16. 16. It's tied up right now. They're working on it. been going there ever since. So I, I have some history. Um, the lake certainly gets overused now because there is more transportation and easier access to get there. Um, I don't blame anybody for not wanting to be at that lake. I just came back from Alaska 
first place I wanted to be was on the lake. It's a beautiful place. However, it belongs to, I feel it belongs to the citizens of Calus. And as long as you're a, a, a resident of Calus paying your taxes, in good standing with your taxes, we should be able to get a sticker or a piece of paper or something to put in our windshield that says that we are in good standings with the town and we should be able to use any body of water in our, in our town. It's ours, we pay our taxes. It gets overused, I'm there every day. And I can guarantee you on any given day there are more people from out of town than there are callous residents on that beach. Our problem is, as a society, we don't police it well. We've let it happen. I sit on the other side every day and I watch. There's some, I've met some interesting people, some good people, some interesting people not so good, <laughs> coming from that beach area. But what just happened just recently, somebody went down there and weed whacked it. That's totally against the law. You know, you were talking about high water mark and low water mark. Well, there is a, a law, the high water mark, 50 feet back, you can't remove, plant, do anything with that. Unless you've been, unless you've been, um, it's actually grandfather. If you've been right, if you've been doing that, that exactly. Doing, he, can, he can keep, he has been. That's right. He was, he but what, what we need to do is, is we need to, if that road does actually belong to the town, and we know we now do have access in there, and we can go down there and use that beach area, it's not a problem. The problem would be parking. Right. So, yeah, parking. you know, we need, a, we need a place for people to park. However, who's going to enforce it? You know, once that parking area is full, go to the next pond. You know, that's not going to happen. They're going to continue to park down the road. And, and I've gone up there on some days, and they're down where the Y splits, and there's cars parked along there. I don't use any of that area. I park behind where I fish. Um, Legally, I don't know if that's legal or not. Nobody's bothered me, nobody's kicked me out of there yet. But we're all looking for the same thing. We're looking to be able to keep our children swimming there because that's where we grew up and we swam. That's what I'm hearing from the consensus of this group out here. Um, but we've let it happen. So now we have to rectify it. And we're not gonna rectify it by um, everybody throwing stuff back and forth. We need to get together as a group. I, don't, I say we, it's, I, I could care less one way or the other. The only thing that happens is if it gets shut down, my scenery changes. <laughs> okay, that's the only thing that changes for me. Because I'm still gonna, I don't swim, but I enjoy the people that are over there. I've met a lot of great people, uh, um, and Mary and, and Rowan, they, they, they walk through there every day that I'm swim, fishing. I've seen these ladies there walking by. Um, we love to use it, but let's, uh, I, we're almost selfish, but let's keep it for ourselves. We need to find a way to keep the numbers down and keep it for our community and our guests. I think, I think I'm, that's more, more of an issue than, than maybe this body or the select board are able to tackle, and that is to be selective on who can be there. Yeah. And if, and if uh, you know, I know somebody from Montpelier, I invite up to, to join me and go to that dock. Absolutely, we, we should be able to have guests. So that shouldn't be permitted if they have a stack. So I think that's getting off a little bit off of the, maybe a, a territory we want to be. I think people in general tend to love things to death, look at our national parks, but that's, that's a whole bigger issue. Right. I think it's really the access to that. And then, then we get into the population control, and I think that's more about what these folks are talking about, is properly policing and managing, uh, carrying and carry out the trash, um, some, some rules to follow because clearly a lot of people don't. Uh, the glass, the dogs, that sort of thing. But I, I'm getting into, you're not for couch. I mean, now we're getting um, picky about who's, who's right to be here. Somebody says, you know, I live, I live in Barry, but I grew up in Cows. I mean, who are you to say, yeah. um, you know, this, this fellow that he left and came back, maybe he's no longer a resident here or spent summers here only. So I think that's kind of dangerous territory. But other, other than that, I hear what you're saying. I think, I think there is an overall... Um, I, I, I guess I, I put that more towards the parking issue because, the, the, like I say, every day there's more out-of-town residents over there than there are at Calis residents. I mean, and now, and, 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 and,
focus on one topic as complicated as it is already, that, that's going to be a hand, get your hands full. That may be a solution, but I think it's a complicated one. Yeah. I think it might be off of what you're saying, a many-step process. I'm going back to to my me, dog. the first step <laughs> is to find a way to secure that beach. I have, a, I have a comment is, is about there somebody who's going to collect these different ideas so we can... It's on table. As, as much as I, I would like to think that that's somehow our private pond <laughs> for, for the public citizens of Cal, I, I think you've got people, it's a public boat launch, and so people have paid for licenses on their boats. I, don't you have to register your boat? Yeah. So I would think that everybody has a right to go to any body of water, no matter where they're from, even yeah. if they're from out of state. Oh, yeah. And also, uh, what's the other one? I guess as it stands now, technically, there's a fishing boating access that was established in 1980. Yeah. But you still have to be able to park somewhere if you want to fish. And, you, and you buy a fishing license. That's so you've got a right to. Yeah. yeah. But if that overflows with, with many people, then they're going to be parking up and down the road. So well, that, that they are enforcing fish and wildlife just the other day. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. You don't have to have a fishing boat with a floor on for kayakers to use your resorts to use it. It's for boating and fishing only. And they will enforce that. Um, and ask people, when I heard, overheard a conversation with Fish and Wildlife um, Warden instructed people that were on the beach to take their car out of the fish access and put it on the other side of the car rail. What Dick is saying is when that goes away and they can't park there anymore, where are they going to go? Yeah, down the road. And then they're going to park on the road and then the admin is going to be chasing that and all the way over the parking board. So how difficult, it, how difficult would it be to get the town to make a designate a parking area for someone in the town for property that's in the county property? They have to buy the That I've been told by uh, by Peg Haskins that's uh, um, or Deb, I'm sorry, I'm glad I keep calling her Peg. Deb Haskins, um, and she said that that beach was never a public beach per se. It was owned before the Valentines and maybe before and before the Valentines. I think it was goes back a couple decades where the person who owned that cottage brought in sand and maybe even had a dock, I don't know, and allowed people, there was a dock somewhere, maybe it was out by Memorial Hall years ago. In 1946, it's in the New York. Yeah, but, but that, that, yeah, is it by the cottage? Okay, so, so there was some nice person who owned that cottage that felt fine about people coming, and that's why it became a public beach. That's my understanding, according to... That well, I'm not saying it didn't go way. Okay, okay, so maybe way back, but maybe he enhanced it with more sand. Yes. But I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is, I don't think the Women's Relief Corps ever put the sand down at that beach, right? So a, a private owner put it down and was kind enough to allow it to be a public beach. That's just what I understand. Well, so I'm not saying it shouldn't be. I'm just saying that you know people began to believe that 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 was the public beach, whereas I've been told that that's, that's not true, that I don't think the, the Women's Relief Corps encouraged it, that they allowed it. But yeah. years ago, the sand was put in by the town. Was it? Yes, of course I, it was. I didn't know and that. that I, I cabin that. was not built until the early 60s, because I was a... The camp, yes. The camp, yes. yes. So that was, so was sometime in the very early 60s, because I was around. I was, Isn't it interesting are we I think people should write down questions. I mean, okay. I gave my list. If people okay. wants to write them down, we can, can start. I mean, um, what are we doing with the email address? 
I, I'm going to keep these. I can, I, I can, I can zero this and give it to whoever wants. If somebody wants to be in charge of this, I've spent so much time on this. I will take the names and email, and I will email everybody to compile a little list of any questions. Okay, I'm going to, I want to zero it first, and then that'd be great. That'd be great because it's a lot of it's a lot of work. And so, if anybody has a, a question. I'll have a list and I'll send an email to everybody, and then we'll 